Hello, my name is Methat Al Masri, and in today's video, I will show you how you can export data from your ASP.NET 6.0 Razor Pages app in Excel format. You don't need me to tell you how important exporting data into Excel is. In fact, there are many people, especially accountants, who love Excel. They can take the data, they can filter it, they can sort it, they can graph it, they can manipulate it. So, regardless of how how good you are at presenting data in tables and rows, they want to see that data in Excel. So this is what I will be talking about today. I will be using a NuGet package called Closed XML, and this package, it facilitates the process of exporting data into Excel. My data source is just going to a. be some static data, essentially a list of student objects. I will be creating Razor Pages application for this demo. So let's get started. I've got .NET 6.0 on my machine. So I will be creating a new Razor Pages application. And this will be the command. My output directory, I shall call it Excel star. And there it goes. So I will move into that directory and let's install the package that we're going to be needing and that is the closed xml package so the command for that is dot net at package and it's called closed xml so let me open up this workspace in vs code and i do that by typing simply code dot close this and i want to create some sample data in my application. So I'll create a new folder here called data. And in this new folder, I'm going to create a new C sharp class and I'll call it student. Now I'll replace this class declaration with my own code. And this is what my code looks like. My student class has four properties. Essentially, they are ID, and that's an integer, first name, last name, school, all of them strings. And here is some sample data. I initialize my index to zero, and I'm going to create a list of students. So the first student, I'll increment index so that it goes from zero to one in this case. And this is the name of my student and i keep on incrementing so each student has a new id and i've got all these students i think there are about 45 of them this is just some sample data and i return the list of students so this method here is called get students and it returns a list of students and it's a static method the next thing i want to do is create my laser page for this purpose so i'm going to create two files the first file i will call it excel dot cshtml and the second file I shall call it excel dot cshtml dot cs so they come in pairs this is the view and this is the code behind for the view I shall be adding minimal code so let's go to the view here and I'll just add this code here and this code declares that it's a page and it's based on the excel model class now we don't have this class this class will be in the code behind I'm going to replace that code behind file with some code which I will explain later later on. So let's go to the Excel CS.html. At the moment it is empty. Let's paste this code. These are the usings that I'll be needing. This is the model class which is identical to the model class here. And this is the constructor. This is an instance variable for the logger. What matters here is this onGet method. This onGet method is going to return a file result. In other words, it's going to return a file that gets downloaded to the client. This is where I'm calling the student class get students method and it gives me a list of students which I'm calling data. This is all the logic we're going to be needing here. Remember that in a spreadsheet, you have a workbook that contains multiple worksheets. So each tab in Excel is a worksheet and everything together, the document itself is the workbook. So here I instantiate a workbook and then I create a worksheet and I'm naming the worksheet students. The first four cells in the first row represents the heading of my columns. The first heading is ID, first, last, and school. 
And these are the cells, row one, column one, row one, column two, row one, column three, row one, column four. So it is really logical because that's the way you think of these spreadsheets. Now here I'm declaring a range. The range is from cell one one to cell one four. And I'm going to set the background color for that range to be almond. Here. I'm initializing my index to one and I'll iterate through all the data and I increment my index so it goes from one to two. So in cell two one, I'm going to put my ID two two, goes my first name, two three, the last name, two four, the school. And then when you go to the next iteration, it will be three one, three two, three three, and three four, and so on and so forth. So this populates all the rows with the appropriate data. The code here simply takes the workbook, saves it as a stream. The stream is converted to an array. You set a content type here for the browser. And this code here is simply to give the file that's going to get downloaded to the user to give it a specific name. The specific name will be students underscore and the date time converted into this format. We're going to set this variable in here. So today the date is January 2022. So this file is going to be named students underscore 2022.0109.xlsx. This content is going to be sent to the browser with this content type and this file name. And that's it. So now to make it a little bit more user friendly, we want to add an additional item in the navigation of our application. So I'll go to shared layout.cshtml and I can add a navigation in here. This will be the line item that I'm adding. It's going to point to this page called Excel and the description will be export to Excel. At this point, we are in a position to be able to test this thing out. So let me run my app with .NET, watch, run, and it will open up in a browser. Here it is running in the browser. Let's click on export to Excel and see what's going to happen. Here it is. It downloaded a file. Let me open the file in Finder as I am using a Mac. And here is the file. Let me open it up. It should open up in Excel. And there you go. You have your data. The first column is highlighted and it's given names for the columns. And the remaining data is here. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this short video. And until the next video, I say see you later. And in the meantime, if you like this video, please give it a like. Thank you and all the best.